Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stephanie Stevens Show. I am Stephanie Stevens, and today on my show, we are talking about mental health issues and a lot of other issues that concerns the young LGBT pronoun community. And today I have invited two young men on my show to share their experience of what they're going through with their mental health issues and sort of anxiety, depression, things that young people are suffering from today. And we want to help educate other young people from their story about what they're going through and how to cope, just in case if they are feeling the same way. So I just want to say welcome to the show, Mr. Um, Adam Kennedy and Brandon Wheeler. How you guys doing? I am doing amazing. Doing great. Thank yeah. you for asking. And thanks for having us here. It's very amazing. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, for sure. You know, you guys look great. You look so cute. Thank you. You know, Thank it's you. Pride. Happy Pride Month, you know. Yeah. Well, Gotta be is, proud. Well, this is Pride Month. Now, how do you guys feel that now, is it your first Pride? No, I've been there many. Yeah. Hmm? I can't hear you. I've been through many Prides already. Oh, you've been to many Prides already. Okay. Yeah. Now, how do you feel this year that Pride is not going to happen? I think Pride now, it's, uh, we're starting to lose the sense of it. We're just thinking it's a parade downtown. We've lost mm -hmm. the true essence of what it means and it's to love ourselves, to love each other. And we could do that from, you know, our home, in front of our home, with our friends and peers, you know, mm -hmm. online, you know? Okay, so Brandon, how do you feel about There's No Pride? Have you ever been to one? Yep, so I've actually been to Pride um, many years. Um, I've been as like myself and then I do drag as well. So I've mm -hmm. been in drag and I mean, it's been an amazing experience because the one time I went, um, people wanted pictures. And so that, that was very like, you know, appreciative of people to want to stop me and take pictures. However, it took me like a half an hour just to get to a club. I guess people mm -hmm. just thought it was that pretty. So oh. <laughs> that's nice, right? That I mean, nice. it's flattering. So, mm -hmm. so now you guys, Adam. Now, when I first talked to you and I asked you to do the show, you actually told me no. But then I came back again and I just said, well, you know, you can help teach other other young people about your experience. And then you sort of changed your mind. And I just want to say thank you for doing that. Now, first and foremost. Um, do you work? Do you work, Adam? Right now, I'm not working, but um, I used to work. Uh, I got laid off on March, uh, on mid-March. Mm -hmm. um, ever since then, I've just been uh, trying to find like a meaning to my life, a more uh, kind of which path I want to go. You know, what things I need to do. You know, like you could just how to decorate my room. You know, get in mm -hmm. touch with the things that I love to do. Now I have all the time to do it. Okay. Now, how are you, how are you feeling since you lost your job? How are you really feeling? I'm feeling less stressed. I don't have to deal with no customers. No. <laughs> 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 well, that's a good thing. Now, do you miss the job? I miss the good things about it, yes. There's always going to be good things about a job that I miss, for sure. Okay. Now, right now I feel like I'm going in as a stronger person. I found myself even more now that I have all this time off. Okay. So that's so basically you have time more time to spend with yourself and understand yeah. yourself. You know, I mean, because sometimes when we I live see I live alone, so I have a lot of time to think and to think about what concerns me, how I feel, and yeah. being alone sometimes can make you have a clearer understanding of that. Um, now, just for you, for you again, Adam, now, do you live at home or do you live on your own? I live with my mom. Okay, so how is the relationship between you and your mother? As like a mother son, we're amazing, you know, but when it comes to, you know, being gay, it's more like a don't ask, don't tell. Like she knows, but she doesn't want me to have people over, guys over, you know, just want to know about it, but she'll love me still because I'm a son kind of thing. 
Okay, that's wonderful. Well, you know, it's great when parents accept you because trust me, I was transitioning and my parents knew everything about me. I'm gonna be honest with you, Adam. My parents never shut the door in my face and they never closed me out of a conversation. <clears throat> if I wanted to talk about anything, they were there. They never mentioned the gay thing to me, the transitioning thing to me, ever. And they're both in heaven now. And I thank God, even after their death, they took care of me. They thought about me enough to make sure that I was okay even when they were gone. So it's a good thing when we have supportive parents. But we as young people must understand sometimes parents aren't going to always be on the same page with us when there's something that they really don't understand. Because sometimes parents are just used to things being the norm for them. And when their children are a little bit different, they don't know how to quite handle it because the stresses of going to work, raising a family, trying to prepare for their future, your future, and the fact of just dealing with everyday life. We understand that. Now, when did you know that you just didn't feel right? Oh, I knew before I could talk. I mean, I knew from like way, way, way young, you know, before even kindergarten. I just like, I, I, I was looking at the boys and I was not looking at the girls. Oh. You know? <laughs> I was not looking that at the like boys. Me. <laughs> and I only thought that I was the only boy because they were talking about, you know, all this stuff in like grade one, grade two, or which girl do you like? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really like any girls, but I didn't want to open up because I thought it was just me, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, up until grade you, six, I thought that, you know, I was the only boy in the world who liked boys until somebody called me a name. And now I knew what I was. So I, I mean, in a sense, I felt insulted, but at least I know what I am now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you feel, is there anybody in your family that just understands you? I feel like my sister understands me. I mean, she lives with me too, you know? Mm -hmm my younger sister and a year younger um that's about as far as family friends they all accept me they all know me they, you know mm -hmm. well that's good now what is it that you feel you have a you have an issue with you say with well, like last month was actually mental illness month what is it mm -hmm. that you feel is the issue that you have what is it that the issue is well, um, I'll say a few things that I'll, I'm going through is for sure depression, anxiety, um, OCD. Um, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Anxiety and depression for sure all the time. It's more like, how do I go with it? How do I mask it? You know, how do I deal with it? And mm -hmm. it's not always there, but when it does come, how do I deal with that type of thing? Is it, is it, is it something that um, stems from you being gay? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. So Feel different. Mm -hmm. Or just feeling different. Okay. Now, how are you actually coping? Are you doing okay? I, to be honest, I don't have any good coping skills. I just take the anxiety that I feel walking down the street and I turn it into sort of um, a dare to go outside and a dare to be myself mm -hmm. and turn it into more of an adrenaline, adrenaline rush, you know? Mm -hmm. so you I know, like that. You, you, you know, Adam, I learned, <clears throat> I learned something when I started transitioning. It was different than when I was just understanding that I was just gay. But then when I started transitioning and having to dip to, to, um, into the world, looking different and trying to feel like who I think I am. Now, I found that the anxiety was high. But you know what? I didn't have to see a doctor for any of that. What made it easy for me, which is a lot different from a lot of other people, is that I just put myself out there. And sometimes that's what we have to do. And sometimes we need a doctor or we, I, for me, when, um, Adam, I've never thought medication was the key. I sometimes just feel like if you put yourself out there and just do what you do, 
I think you will be okay. Because from what I'm looking at, I'm looking at you and you look pretty good. So that for me is a start. Not that I know what's going on in your head or anything like that or how you're really feeling. But when you look in the mirror and if you think that person looks good, you're on the road to recovery because you took the time to put that person together. Nobody helped you. Nobody did anything. You did it. So if you were satisfied with the way you looked in that mirror, that means that you can go out into the world. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm just going to say this here. I wish you the best. I hope things will be great for you because you're a young man. And lots of young people out there are suffering just like you with the gay issue, the trans issue, just fitting in. It's a difficult day-to-day -day task. And I understand that because I grew up through all of that. And mainly in a Christian household, it was really rough. But my parents always just loved us. And if you know your mother loves you, things are going to be okay for you, Adam. Trust me. Okay? Now, when did you feel... Now, when you go out into the, our community, do you just go out and you're just, you feel better when you're out and about in the community? Do you feel you like, like you can be yourself? You mean like down like in Church Street? Like the gay community? Anywhere. Anywhere in a community that you feel like you fit in. Do you feel like you can just go out and be Adam? Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we can't just go all over the world flaming and, and, and pushing ourselves in people's faces. That's not what we do. But I'm just saying, do you feel like you can just be Adam when you go outside? Yep. Okay. Now, Brandon, do you feel the same way? Yep. I feel when I go outside, I can just be myself and I'm not ashamed of who I am. I'm very proud of who I am. Okay. Now, do you live at home, Brandon? I do, yeah. I live at home with my uh, family. So I live with, um, I have my brother, my sister, um, my uh, niece as well, and my dad. Okay. So things are things good at home? Um, things, yeah, things have gotten better. I mean, there was a lot of things that have happened, but I mean, I've reached out in ways to other people and such like that. So it's been, it's been amazing, right? So to connect with others who actually understand versus mm -hmm. just talking to normal, you know what I mean, no, normal people. There's other people who actually have go through mental health issues and mm -hmm. such like that, right? And even being gay even, that reach mm -hmm. out to me and always ask me questions constantly. And I think it's amazing that people want to come to me and do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and ask the questions, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Now, now Adam, yeah. when you were, when you were, um, and when you were in high school, or co are you in college now? No, I didn't go to college. Well, okay. that's why it didn't work out. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so when you were in high school, sorry, you're, uh, you're, you're, I can't hear you. Sorry, was a question? Wait, Brandon, can you hear me? Okay. Somebody was ringing the phone. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry. There we go. Sorry about that. Somebody was ringing through the phone. Um, I don't know how to, I forgot to turn off the do not disturb. Sorry. Um, now, did you ever have a girlfriend, Adam? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, how did you feel about that situation? How did you tell her that you didn't think this is going to work out? Or did you just fake it until she just went away? Or how did it work? Well, I mean, my first girlfriend, like, it lasted for maybe a week. And <laughs> I realized, I mean, I just can't do it. So oh, much. <laughs> it just, no. That is so funny. That sounds so much like me. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 <Ooh. clears throat> 
I would even get to like to do anything. I just did it. Couldn't handle it, you know. Oh. <laughs> now, now another question. Just, just I mean, just so I can put it together. Have you ever slept with a woman? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh okay. So how did that go? First time was interesting. Like I, I was drunk or having fun, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all right. I mean, I still prefer guys way more, trust me. Oh, you're just trying, but trying things out. Trying, doubling. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then I had an FDM uh, boyfriend, mm -hmm. a male trans boyfriend. It was interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so you weren't, you, it wasn't that you were totally turned off with the, with the sex. No, like for me, it's like, I, I when I get into a relationship, whatever, I, I also get into knowing the person on the inside. And sometimes it doesn't always link in with what my sexual preferences. And it's mm -hmm. really interesting because I really emotionally love the person. I guess I'd say emotionally I'm pansexual, physically I'm more attracted to guys kind of thing. Okay. Now, Brandon, are you attracted to women? No, not at all. Okay. So yeah. you understand exactly who you are? Yep, I do. Okay. Now, um, Adam, I just want to go back to one thing. Now, once you figured out that you liked guys, and how did you tell your mother and your father, how did you tell your parents that you liked men? Well, growing up, they, they saw that, you know, I was playing my sister's Barbies, my sister's toys, and they take that away from me. And then, you know, my dad tried to get me into sports, going to the gym to lift weights and stuff, and it didn't work out. Um, so I, I, around high school, I told them, you know, or you no, know, growing up, I even told them, I don't like girls. I don't want to get married, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe that would tell them what I was saying, but they didn't understand. So high school, I told them, I'm gay, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I not interested in girls. I don't want to get married, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, there's so many subjects I want to talk about, but I, we can't talk about it all on the show today. Now, I want to just talk to you about, are you attracted to masculine guys? Um, or what do, you, what do you guys call them? Emo? Is that means of, of the, what does that mean? The emo guys? What is that? Yeah. The, you know, the black eyeliner and the black clothes. So like mm -hmm. a punk style. Oh, okay. I'm attracted to any guy, but right now I have a very special guy. So oh, okay. no other guy can come in comparison. Oh, okay, wonderful. <laughs> now, Brandon, what kind of guys are you attracted to? I like the um, the masculine, you know, the, the fit, slim type guys. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the, the prettyish boys, yeah. Okay, so I you mean, like the, the twinkie-ish kind of guys? Yeah, okay. uh, but well, it also know. matters what's on the inside too, though, right? Like it honestly matters mm -hmm. to me what's on the inside of the person and who mm -hmm. they are. The looks I find are just a plus. Mm -hmm. If now, they come along. Adam, right. Adam, what was your first, how did you feel when you went to your first pride? How did you feel about that? It was, it was interesting, you know. I Most of the time, you know, I live in Mississauga. So mm -hmm. if I'm walking around, most than likely I'm the only one looking gay around. Oh, you know? yeah. And now I'm walking in a parade with everybody who looks like me, who's different. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wow. So it's not the me, the only one walking down the street that's gay, you know? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Oh. Now, Brandon, I saw that you were doing drag. How did that come about? Um, so when we had embassy in Hamilton. Um, I used to go there, but before I was able to go out when I was 19, I kind of got to, um, just got into like it on Facebook, following different people, like different Queens that were local and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I found that it was very interesting. So I actually had some friends as well that I'm close with who do drag too. And so I kind of, you know, kind of went to their shows and just got to see what they got to do during them. Right. As well. So it really sparked my interest, and I did it for about three years, and then I had to stop mm -hmm. um, because I moved away. Okay, so <clears throat> what was your first sexual experience, Brandon? Um, it was with one of my uh, one of my 
close friends that I actually grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, it, me and him just kind of experimented together. Okay, that, that's what I was trying to get to. Was he male? Yeah, he was male. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So was it a good experience or bad experience? Um, it was okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, so Adam, for yeah. you, what was your first gay experience like? When you first said, I'm in, I want this guy, I'm going over his place and it's going to happen. Um, so like, I mean, there was always like, you know, little kids playing around, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into that. But when I would say like, I was actually 17, I was on Grindr saying that I was 18. And mm -hmm. I think that was the first time. Okay. I actually, now you know, officially went to somebody's place. Oh, okay. So how did you feel after it happened? After the first experience, you had never done it before. After your first experience, how did you feel afterwards? Did it tell you, I'm gay and I liked what just happened? Yeah. Was okay. exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Brandon? Yeah, it, exactly. It kind of like, it did fulfill what I was kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. hoping to angle towards okay now now that you got oh <laughs> now like that, that I, I get it now that you guys um are out and you you're comfortable with who you are you told your parents how do you feel now that gay is in the mainstream and for you young people now mainly for you, Brandon, if you plan on doing drag, you now have the RuPaul Drag Race. What do you think of that? RuPaul's Drag Race, I think it's so amazing and inspiring. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I know um, there is Brooklyn Heights from Toronto, and she's mm -hmm. now a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. And just to watch the way that um, she grew, that was, that was truly, like, really inspiring as well. Okay, what about you, Adam? How do you feel about the RuPaul Drag Race? Have you ever done drag, Adam? Because you're beautiful. Your face is soft and <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I've dabbled. I haven't gotten full drag. Just, you know, kind of played around with the eye makeup. I'm not um, really good at the eye makeup. I'm trying to learn them myself. But I think RuPaul's Drag Race really helped mainstream sort of pave the way of drag. I mean, before then, most of the people didn't know what drag is. You know, okay. now it's more sort of, it's mainstream that it's allowed, you know, it's allowed the common population to get to a, a grip, you know, not necessarily the full meaning, you know, what, uh, just to understand what it's like, you know. Mm -hmm. So do you, do, do you, do you dress often or do you feel like you want to be a drag queen? I, I'd love to be. I'd love to learn like the, the art, the paint a face. It'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like that you are an entertainer? For sure. Yeah. Or you just want to be, you know, like most of a lot of times the guys just want to dress up to be fabulous and go to the clubs to get the attention. Oh, well, I know I can't dance. No, I can dance. I know I can't sing. I can lip sync. I can mm -hmm. entertain a few guests. Um, I guess I would have to sort of explore, play around, see what mm -hmm. I could do, can't do. Well, drag is a growing process. See, I don't just, I'm just not transformed. I've, I've made my living mostly from drag. Everything I really ever had before my parents left me anything, I made from drag. And I actually made a pretty good living. So it was, drag is not a bad thing. It's just you, you have to find your niche. Now, Brandon, I see you were in drag, and I think you do it for a different reason. What do you mean, like a different reason? Well, when, when you sent your picture, you said that you like getting the attention. Is it, is it that you like just being out, just done up, or are you thinking about show business as well? I'm thinking like, honestly, honey, it would, I honestly would like to do true business. I mean, I'm not an attention seeker, mm -hmm. but to go out and, you know, like put work into dressing up and even doing, you know, a show, Mm -hmm. The fulfillment afterwards, you know, of having some people come up to me that I don't even know, and they're like, wow, you're amazing. And I'm like, wow, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, even that motivation does help keep me going. Okay. Now, Brandon, you said that you were an advocate 
for mental illness. What does that mean? So like I, su I suffer from um, anxiety, depression, and PTSD. I mean, like, and I know a lot of people around me who do as well. So, I mean, being an advocate, I mean, is just like someone who like, I like to, for people to, um, I like to reach out to people and for people to know that they can call me anytime they need to, if they need someone to talk to, right? And mm -hmm. to know that that information stays with me and that I don't judge and it goes nowhere, right? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have a trouble and a lot of trust issues with stuff like that. Okay. Now, Adam, are you at the moment seeing a doctor or a therapist? Uh, I was, yes. I have medications prescribed, but I kind of take them when I feel like it. But mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't feel good on them. I feel lethargic. I, okay. And it's, it's stuff that's deep-rooted that I need to deal with myself. I can take a pill for the rest of my life and mm -hmm. feel numb and still know about it and not know how to react about it. Or I could deal with the source. Mm -hmm. what you, know, Adam, you know, I'm going to be honest. I've always been the type of person to head, to just face things head on. Sometimes we just have to face the truth. Yeah. And you have to face it head on. So um, I'm not telling you to take the route that I took, but it worked for me. So um, it might not work for everyone because some people are not as strong as others. Now, when you, where, like, what are you planning on doing now, Adam, that you're not working, we're in this pandemic, and we don't know what's gonna happen in the next few months. How, like, what are you, are you, are you planning anything? Um, I've been trying to like bake some more, making uh, cakes or any desserts, or uh, I made a jello sculpture the other day. I know, I, I saw that. It was fabulous. I loved it. You, oh, know, you know, with color, you, let me tell you something, you guys, something. With drag, one thing I learned with anything, when you are great with colors and organizing colors or writing or drawing, details are the key to life. If you understand... I'm attracted to people that are detailed. And when I looked, saw your Jell-O um, sculpture thing there, the first thing I thought, the right color combination, and it looked like art. A lot of people wouldn't see that, but I did. And I thought, oh my God, this guy's a genius. He's, he's great. He can put the color combinations together and other people who are just as artistic as he is, understands what he's doing. And it was great. I loved it. I thought it was fabulous. So I, I take my hat off to you. You did a good job. The jello thing was good. I'm not one for jello because I'm a girl. I need to I need to really eat. I need to feel like a full jello. Hey, don't do it. <laughs> Unless you put some vodka in it, then that's a different Oh yeah. Story. We can adjust the recipe for you, ma'am. <laughs> now um, I hear that, um, Brandon, that you're, that you're a promoter for a DJ. So are you into the clubs now? Um, well, it's a, it's a friend from Toronto and I just like help him out. But I mean, we, I just started doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, once the clubs do open up, there are plans to go to clubs and hand flyers out, stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, like, I want to help get his live views up for him and recognize his hard work. So, mm -hmm. And I now, mean, it gives me something to do as well. Okay. Now, Adam, when you yeah. think about young people, that people around your age and Brandon's age, what do you think they should do if they feel, what's the first step you think they should do if they feel like whether they're, they're different they have anxiety, they have depression, they have something that they can't quite explain what it is, or the fact that they just feel like they're just they're gay. What do you think, from a young perspective, what do you think young people should do? I'd from say explore it, research it. You know, there's a lot of uh, helplines and links on the internet that could help uh, young individuals that don't, have, don't feel like they want to come out but want the educational resources that they could find online that could help. 
Mm -hmm. Now, Brandon, what do you think? What do you think young people should do? Who should they contact first? I think honestly, they, they should um, try and try and reach out to people like close to them, maybe be it friends or family, or even people that maybe that they have worked with, or even just people that they know around the neighborhood. Because I, I mean, there's a lot of people that I know that I've reached out to, that's been very helpful to me that kind of shocked me in a way. Mm -hmm. you, know, in a good way. Good, you know, for me, for not knowing you guys for, for a short period of time, just talking to you, I really find that just from looking at you, I mean, it's different. You, you can look at me and say this and that, but when you don't know a person, you don't really know how they really are. Now, from just looking at the two of you guys and talking to you just for this short period of time, I have found that you guys are on the right track because at least, Adam, for you, you've admitted that you've had a problem, you've seen a doctor, you are taking steps toward a lot of the big things in life that young gay men probably would shy away from until their, until their late 30s and 40s. The fact that you took charge of your life, that you knew that you had some illness of some kind, you talked to a doctor, you talked to your mother about you being different than other boys and figuring out that you were gay, you experienced some part of gay life with pride. And the mere fact that you now have someone that you're reaching out to maybe for um, a relationship or, 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 or friend with benefits, it's just, it's a, it's very, um, it, it, that's very encouraging. That's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Experience is a good thing. So don't ever change that. Constantly experiment with who you are and what you want to do. That's a good thing. Now, Brandon, for you, you you have you you know you have a, a large family and you're in this structure. Now, do you feel that you are ready for a stable partnered relationship? Or do you feel that you are just looking for someone, friends with benefits? And this is, I don't want you to say it to appease me. I want you just to be honest with yourself. Honestly, I am ready for a, a relationship. I want someone who is, wants to be serious. Mm -hmm. it's, now, I feel like it's come to that time. Okay, so are you stable enough for that kind of a relationship, mentally, physically, and financially? Not I mean, that you have to buy a person a million things, but with this pandemic, we are in, I'm just, I just try, trust me, I live in reality. When you live alone, you have to live in reality. Yeah. And I, She froze. Uh -oh. She's completely frozen. <laughs> you notice that too, right? Yeah. Sorry about okay. That. Okay. I'm pretty sure Perry knows too. Oh. Oh, she's resetting. You guys. I don't know what happened. It just stopped. Now, Brandon, can you answer that question? I can hear you, Adam. Can you hear me? Yep. 
Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Brandon. Okay, yeah, so the, the relationship question, I am ready for someone who wants to be serious. And But um, as for mentally, um, yeah, I feel like I've really had the time since November to work on myself and reach out to resources and people and such. So um, physically, yep. And mm -hmm. um, financially, I feel like I'm in a good spot. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not too worried there. Okay, so um, can you guys hear me clearly? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can hear you, yep. Uh, oh, okay. Now, because Barry said this, the audio sounds strange. Um, but anyway, uh, so Adam, are you ready for a relationship of any kind? Yeah. Are you in the right frame of mind now to take on a relationship? Yes. Yeah, I, I've been single now for almost uh, half a year, six months. Took some time to uh, heal, to basically find what I want in the next relationship. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm 100% I'm ready. Okay. So, now, you know, I just want to say, you guys were so fabulous. You really were. What, Adam... What are some of the things you enjoy? What are the things you want to do? What, is, what, what makes what makes you happy? Um, like with my boyfriend, or in general? Yeah. What would you What would you want? Like, in a relationship. I mean, we know the typical things: going to the movies, hanging out, you know, mm -hmm. with each other, playing video games. But what makes you? I mean. I mean yeah, but I like I like going outside to the Palladium or to the movies or even to the park. I mean, now with this pandemic, you can't really go out much, you know. So it's uh, more exploring ourselves in a more uh, like adventurous, interesting way, you know. Okay, what about you, Brandon? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I just can't. I can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Let, let me just see. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, we're good now. Okay. I'm better. I, oh. it, they, they said that the internet is going up and down um, on, 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 for everybody. So it's not just me. It's it's just the way the internet's working so i'm not i'm really not touching anything it's just going on and so you guys you guys got the words um perry said it's me <laughs> i don't know i didn't touch anything i didn't touch nothing okay well anyway now brandon for you what makes you what would make you happy being with someone being with someone that would make me happy. So, um, the fact that they want yeah. So the fact that they want to spend time with me and that they want to care, um, I want to have someone around and be able to do things with and relate with and stuff like that. So have you have you have you have you like um, have you met somebody already? Um. I actually have. I've me okay. met Adam recently. Oh, 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 Adam. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Adam. Oh, so you guys, so you guys are, are you guys together? Yeah. Okay. So you're dating. Oh. Yes. Oh, we are. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's news to me. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> okay. I like that, baby. <laughs> Well, you know, I just want to say it has been a real experience meeting the two of you. And um, it's changed my perspective about young people not having any values and morals. And you guys have enlightened me that you guys are taking charge of your life and you're trying to find each other is a good thing and mainly in this pandemic so i don't know how it's going to work for anyone that's looking for a relationship 
um, to go forward in this pandemic when mainly when you're supposed to be social distancing. Um, but, you know, I'm glad the two of you found each other. And I just want to say, I'm going to thank y'all for coming on the show. Adam, you're a real inspiration. So, thank and you. Brendan, it's great that you are a support system there for him. Now, I know that, um, Brendan, you want to say something in closing. Did you hear me, Brandon? No. I did. I yeah. know did you, you wanted so, to say I, something. I, you can hear me, right, Adam? Yep. Okay. So, I know you said that we're we're boyfriends, but listen, Mister, I really like you. And did you want to be my boyfriend? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear him, Adam? Yes, I always want to be his boyfriend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so, do you guys you guys think this can happen, or is it gonna happen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, I think Brandon wanted to do something. I'm this this connectivity is giving us issues, but I think Zoom actually fixes it. When they when it goes into the cloud, so um, but anyway, I just want to say it was um, Brandon. You get that surprise ready if you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> and um, um, Adam, I just want to say you're a real inspiration. Thank you for doing the show for me. You've really inspired me and changed my mind a lot about the way I think about young people. Thank and, you so um, much. You, you as well, Brandon for the fact that you're very supportive. It's great that we have that today. And um, I'm just glad that I got to meet y'all. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This is amazing. I'm glad I got to meet you too. It's so great. So when, when, when everything gets back to normal, if it does, we're going to go have to hang out and carry on. Yes, yes. we will. Yes, yes please. <laughs> so, That's um, amazing. Gonna, you, you, you want, so did you do what you wanted to do already, Brandon? Yeah, um, how, how are we going well, to just play it to you? Just play it and just, why don't you ask Adam, did you ask him already? Yeah, I asked him. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, I didn't hear it. Can you do it again just so I can hear it? Because I really want to feel the emotion of it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Adam. Yeah. I really like you and I want you to be my boyfriend. Will you go out with me? Always and forever. Aww. Mm -hmm. You're so handsome, honestly. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear, I didn't hear a yes, Adam. You got yes. A yes. Out of here. yes. <laughs> now, Always. So what's, what would you want to be your first date? What do you want to happen during your first date, Adam? Um, I'm a, I mean, if it's going to be now, it would be at a park. But if it was after the pandemic, I'd like to go maybe to like to a movie or dinner. Or bowling. Oh, all right. Yeah. Now you heard that. You heard that, Brandon, didn't you? I heard that. That sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> I like bowling. Okay. Well, let's play. That, let's play that little song that you want to play. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh, look at you! You're so cute there, um, Adam. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was like, my heart. Great. Oh. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for doing the show for me. You were very um, inspirational and educational. And hopefully um, we will all be blessed with just making it through all of this madness. The two of you have found each other. That's a great thing. So good luck, young people, and have fun. Have lots thank and you. lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Thank, thank you so you much know. for having me today. I appreciate it. You know, no problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, on the show today, we had Mr. Um, Adam Kennedy and Brandon Wheeler 
um, talking about mental illness and just the struggles of being young in the LGBTQ Ronown community. So I just want to say thank you guys so much. I'm going to sign off now to you guys. Thank you guys so much. And I will send you this video in about 30 minutes. Is that okay? Then you guys promote a watch party. And then we will all have a good time. Thank you guys. Have yeah, a great day. Thank you. Uh, thank you so Bye. much for having us. No Bye. problem. Bye. Have a good night. You too.